five. At a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. more. I hope Doug's all right. He is uh, Doug, with Doug. Miss Meads. Doug is going to join us via Zoom. Ooh. I know. Pardon? Did she have someone? Um, like a C9 dog? I guess, no. Tech support? Tech support. That was my dad's tech support, you said. Um. <laughs> I still need to look at that, of course. I need tech support too, that's why. <laughs> Good morning. I can pass it to him. Thank you. Start. I see. Can't wait till we get to be like Texas. I got that for the day. Oh, yeah. You're already goddamn mad. The frogs were out this morning. The, the frogs were out? Oh, my God. Just get a couple of frogs in there. That gives you an excuse to not wear your pants. <laughs> well, I think Pete Shaitee works too. Right. Cranes are good. Some ducks. I saw a bear Tuesday morning. We are. Oh no! Caught a glimpse of him as he went running back into the woods. So, Can we take us out of the waiting room? Oh, I admit, admit. all. Oh, there we go. There we are. We're all good. Lots of people popping on. Good morning, Andrea and Melissa. Back at my little TV. Hello. Oh my, oh my God. God. Holy cow. You're good. This is Doug. Yeah. Everybody what do I need to do to make this work? This do work. This do work. Oh boy, oh boy. I need to uh, text somewhere. That's there we right. Go. How's that? Can you guys hear me? Just shake your heads. All right. The bobblehead dolls. The hour of nine o'clock having arrived, I will call this meeting to order. This is the Extension Education and Communication Committee on um, March 25th. We have a 15 item agenda and I'll make the a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Move the second. Go. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The um, open meeting law requirements have been met through proper posting. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the so minutes of January 28th as distributed. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Election of officers. <laughs> Dan is chair. I'll Who? Dan. Oh, well, Mr. Schreiner. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I answered to just about anything. I, I'll second that. Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Who do we? Cast an anonymous ballot. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Nominations for vice chair. Does anybody want it? Raise your hand. Helen. Okay.
do we have to nominate him or can we just knight him vice chair? <laughs> I'll nominate him vice chair. How's that? Oh, well, Doc did your second. Okay. Then you put Any the further in. nominations? Any further nominations? Make a motion to cast down his ballot. I'll second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nominations are currently open for secretary. I nominate Richard Caesar. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodness. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Any further nominations? I'll move to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Let me just verify officers. Chair is Dan. Yep. Vice Chair is Kellen. Yep. Uh, Secretary is Doc. And um, I am going to, well, actually, I think when, um, when um, Caitlin joins us, I'll, we'll do introductions then, because then we'll all be here. Or we'll all be here one way or another, so. When who joins us? Caitlin. See number eight? Eight. Yeah. That happening today yes it is happening today. all right let's um, move to number six on the agenda museum update well not a huge amount of big changes or anything still um, I brought down the invoice for the uh, website renewal and what we've done is when, when Ted sends me the bill, I usually pay it right away because it takes quite a while to get it through the different levels here. And then eventually the historical society gets reimbursed. So I took <coughs> this up to Paul and then he sent it over. He had me take it over to Michelle. And uh, so I just have to check to see what happened to it since then. It's not you know, it's not something that had to be paid immediately, but um, I better get that taken care of because I hadn't heard anything about that. Okay. Uh, other than that, um, we're considering maybe moving the website from, uh, right now we've got Ted Helgeson taking care of it, and he does a wonderful job. Th the problem is on my end. Uh, the program, the platform is called uh, WordPress, and it used to be really easy. I mean, I could put things on there, and it just seems like it's got worse. It's gotten more and more frustrating. Fortunately, Derek here is a website guru. Has he volunteered to take this over? Well, <laughs> he did. I volunteered <laughs> to help with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that means the same thing. Right, because I, I want to be able to do, like, the post things on it and, you know, updates and that. Um, so mainly it's me doing all that, but it would need to get moved from uh, WordPress over to Squarespace. Squarespace. So we're still talking about that. And it would be cheaper as well. So we're thinking about that. Everybody likes that idea, right? <laughs> would, would the product um, be equal to or greater than what we're experiencing now? It'd be a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, cause it's just, you know, you want it, it's just I like things in certain places, and it's been really hard to do that WordPress. I just get get it down, and then they update, and everything changes. Uh, I'm familiar <laughs> so, with that. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I just want to say that Kellen's mother, if you didn't catch it, Lynn, helped us put on a wonderful program about the Flying Nelsons on the ski jumping family oh yeah oh, great yep and she was great and she has star quality she <laughs> really does she should be having her own show i think 
<laughs> Tough sell, I'm afraid. So if you haven't seen the program, the History File program about the Flying Nelsons, I, I'm sure it's... Um, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So you might want to watch it because... It's very good. Pretty incredible uh, story about ski jumping in this con in this county. So that's it. Anybody have any questions? Well, and your show won an award. Oh yeah, yeah. Mary and I got an award on our our show. Ah. Yeah, um, best of show, like a dog. I always say, <laughs> 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 and an award of merit. So uh, we were really excited about that. What group awarded? The award? What is um, it's the best of the Midwest Media Fest. Oh, so it's okay. Wisconsin Community Media and the Midwest region of the National ah. Community Television Group. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it makes it easier when I work with a studio that really helps me with things and helps us with things, and we really appreciate that. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, and a lot of people seem to enjoy it. I was telling him the other day I was pulling into the grocery store in Galesville and there was nobody in the parking lot and on this black truck comes roaring up and parked right next to me and this guy got out and I thought oh my gosh you know, <laughs> what did I do and I got out and he said oh yeah I saw that program about Chapultepec Peak and I was just up there and that's so good so <laughs> So you just never know who that's you're... That's got to make you feel good. Yeah, it was. It's like nice to know we have our viewing public yeah. anyway. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And um, like I say, I, I put it all to WTCO because they are very supportive because I need help editing sometimes. <laughs> I'm not the big uh, computer person that probably should have in there. But anyway, so does anybody have any questions? All right, I guess that concludes my spiel. And thank you, Nancy. And, oh, thank and you. Nancy got to meet my husband the other day. Lucky Nancy. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, at first I wasn't sure that name, you know, I thought I should know this guy. And then after he, did, he, he wasn't there more than a couple minutes, he got up and left. And I thought, oh, yeah, now I know who that was. <laughs> okay. So I will, I'll check on this build. <laughs> Educator reports. Who's first? Which one of you wants to go first? Let's have Steve go first. Okay. He's on the sheet here first. On All my right. sheet. <laughs> Speak up, Steve. Okay. So, um, our winter crop production meeting information was sent out in my January and February email and uh, statewide programs are being promoted including focus on forage beef production uh, coffee chat coffee chat is uh, geared towards farm management issues and um, so focus on forage has been held uh, monthly twice monthly on wednesdays and um, topics on the beef the beef side are cow calf to feedlot management so they're covering the whole aspect of beef production and then um, also we've started badger crop connect now in mid-march and uh, i will be hosting the uh well it's virtual so, but i will be hosting somewhere in april we're still working that schedule out so that will be live from trempolo and jackson counties and then um so I have had uh, three local Zoom meetings, and um, the one that I held here in March, we had four participants sign up. So not exactly rock star, but we had very good uh, participation. And I was planning Badger Crop Connect was, uh, there was some debate whether that was going to continue throughout the crop season or if it was even going to be done here in 2021. So that was part of me getting this crop chat up and running locally to address local issues. Um, now Badger Crop Connect will be running and running throughout the cropping season. That's every two weeks that we have meetings. 
And uh, so I will not be doing the local uh, crop chats as I'm part of the planning and operations work for Badger Crop Connect. And so the Badger Crop Connect links and sign up has all been sent out and promoted locally here. Um, so um, also February and now March has been very busy helping people sort out the confusion around pesticide applicator training. And um, so I've arranged to have people test one-on-one -on -one, um, in both counties. So we're, we're getting people's needs met that way. And um, a lot, most people have been grandfathered in, but new applicators or people that expired before the, the magic cutoff date of January 30th of 2020, still need to get licensed so we are getting those people licensed and everything um, so that's uh what i've been busy with um, any questions thank you steve yep. adam you're next on the list All right. Hello. Can you all hear me okay? Uh, so, um, Adam Trenzo, Youth and Families Educator for Trempeleau County. Um, so, it's broken down into kind of two general areas. There's youth education, family education. So, on the youth education side, a lot of my work recently, um, other than working with like STEM education for Head Starts, elementary school programs, different things like that, um, I've mainly been working on a program called Juntos Wisconsin, and that is bringing uh, the 4-H program and all of the great benefits of it, along with uh, all of the UW system kind of resources to, um, to bear to help out Latinx and first generation families who are looking at attending um, any sort of after, you know, after graduation education, so whether that's tech school, um, working with a, a trade union, um, going going to a four-year university, and so it's a very comprehensive system, and we're just looking at bringing it into here in Wisconsin. So we are having a series of spring uh, sessions. The one this last Tuesday was a really uh, big success. We had independent school district attend with students, uh, as well as a number of other school districts um, and and families and moms uh, and, and dads from around the state. And they asked very specific questions, very kind of candid questions like, you know, I didn't know that the FAFSA was for this or can my kid attend college? And the answer from an expert was like, yes, and this and this. So kind of building the capacity of people to leave fuller lives that they didn't think that they could do uh, otherwise. And it's just extension connecting people with with experts and, and expertise. So um, feel feeling pretty good about that. Uh, so that's on the youth side of things. On the family education side, generally speaking, um, there's direct education, which absolutely happens. But a lot of times there has to be kind of an environmental change. You can't, you know, you can teach a homeless person all, all you can about parenting, but like there's, there's a lot of other things in the way um, of them enacting some of those. So I do provide strategic planning capacity building services for uh, the Alliance for Youth, uh, a group called Resilient and Trauma-Informed Communities, um, which brings people together for a whole host of different things. Uh, we've got our uh, Jail to Community Reentry Coalition, um, which uh, seeks to provide services, which are typically you know none, to um, anyone who's coming out of jail um, and just kind of helping them to, to build up the skills and planning needed for a successful transition to, you know, re-enter the communities that they live in. Um, so I think that that's pretty important and we're making a lot of big strides on that as far as both volunteer um, commitments and um, being able to do some planning time. Uh, and then the National Alliance on Mental Illness is another group that I work with um, that, that is kind of working on building capacity and um, addressing a lot of the needs that our, our county has. Um, additionally, I am helping to plan and introduce fatherhood specific programs to our county and state. Um, that's kind of ongoing and we're, we're kind of in the planning and starting to roll out some programs for that. Um, as far as direct education goes, I am teaching uh, reentry skills, stress management and parenting classes remotely in the Trempeleau County Jail. And that happens weekly on Tuesdays. And then I also provide uh, diversion agreement planning. So. Um, the DA's office will contact me, say, hey, we've got this person who, you know, we've dreamed, you know, for whatever reason, it's not not a good fit for the jail, but they do need some additional education to make sure they don't recidivate, make sure they don't 
see us again in the criminal justice system. And that involves um, some kind of life skills planning and conversations about, it might be something as simple as like budgeting, like people wind up in the jail under you know the county dime for a month because they couldn't afford to tank a gas um, because for whatever reason, right? And then all of a sudden there's, there's a month of jail bed space being used up. So um, anything we can do to, to mitigate something like that is gonna help them live their lives and help us, you know, as, as the county government not spend money on that. Uh, additionally, looking at building capacity, um, grant season is kind of rolled in and um, grants that I've uh, written and, and created, uh, I'm currently working on a $2,500 one for the Alliance for Youth in our county. Statewide grants, uh, we received $7,500 for our Juntos program, $15,000 for our Juntos program. Um, that's divided amongst kind of four or five counties. So we'll be getting kind of a share of that. Uh, $500 was granted to our NAMI organization here in the county. Um, and then we've been able to disperse $500 from our Alliance for Youth, uh, from those grants to an Osseo uh, Youth Peer-to-Peer -peer Mental Health Support Program. Any questions? Um, Adam, uh, this is Dan. <clears throat> Could you briefly talk about um, the discussion we had yesterday and kind of go over that because I know I for one was um, totally ignorant uh, about that until I was talking to you yesterday and this has to do with um, individuals coming out of the jail absolutely any chance I have any platform you'll give me to mention this I will absolutely do this so for the county board members and everyone in the room um, people in jail how often do you think about them probably not a whole lot and if you do Typically, you know, it falls along some pretty predictable things like, well, they, they did something to wind up there, which is absolutely true. Um, and uh, when they get out, you know, they probably have their car there and they hop into their car and they go back home and they, they, they say, oh, well, I'm not going to do that again, right? Uh, that's not the case. Um, in a lot of cases, people uh, who are picked up, in some cases, they've been hired through a temp company to work at Ashley. Uh, furniture and so they're set up at the RKD motel for a week they've got nobody around they get in trouble they're in Whitehall Wisconsin they came here from Texas or Louisiana they've got nobody um, they don't know if they'll have a job typically they don't have a job um, when they come out um, and just think about what that would be like if you were in the middle of Wyoming or Louisiana in some you know small jail and you had nothing like that that's what we're we're up against and so I work with these people um, you know, a lot and they're, they're just like anyone else. And the critical thing is there's a lot of data and a lot of support that we can use through extension to make sure we're getting the right interventions in the right dosages to people to make sure that the recidivism rate that we can track um, can go down. And that saves everybody money, that saves livelihoods, that saves a whole lot of things. And so what happens is I work with people typically uh, folks that have been there for anywhere from three weeks to about three months. That's typically kind of the, the Goldilocks zone of people who need a little bit of help um, uh, and, and, and we're able to provide that. There's classifications for people low, medium, and high risk assigned through the jail. And we're able to work with low and medium and anybody who's high risk who is um, deemed able to come to programming by the jail staff. So there's a lot of layers of insulation to this. Uh, we work with goal setting. So doing a lot of kind of personal strengths building because you know when I'm gone, it's just them. Uh, and so we work on setting goals. We work on creating plan A, plan B, plan C, um, going through things like that. And then we also talk about like what material resources do you have that you aren't able to get. And there are things that you know are sitting around our house, a coat, a sweat, uh, you know, a, a sweat, pair of sweatpants, maybe an old pair of work boots. That's going to keep people from freezing. Like, and so it's such, such an easy thing and such a like m morally right thing to help people who are in need. Um, but a lot of times we have this mental block about it that, you know, there's something about them that somebody else can hand, can help them out. Not us, maybe some government entity, maybe somebody at the county level can, can do this thing. But really, it takes everybody in the community to help another community member. And that, that's, that's how we need to see them. Um, and then once they're released, we, we connect them with a whole host of support services um, centered largely around um, open spaces that they would normally um, need to go to anyways. So that might be um, businesses, it might be libraries, it might be other government uh, entities where they already need to go to, to access the internet, which you know they pay taxes for anyways. Um, so it makes sense for them to be able to do. So when they're there, you know, 
there's somebody there who's trained who knows that they might need a pair of socks or a toothbrush or different things like that. So little things that can make a big difference at critical junctures in people's lives where they're most receptive to education and material support. Thanks for that. Um, I can tell you from personal experience um, and my involvement with the Sheriff's Department that for a very long time, um, the question of why do these people keep ending up in jail again? Um, because there was no thought put into actually why the, and what's causing the recidivism. Um, there was that rare individual from time to time that would offend intentionally so he or she had a warm place to sleep during the winter but um, and, and, and I would imagine that still occurs but um, that is pretty rare. The, uh, the rest of them um, repeat offenders. Um, people seem to be puzzled when if they'd stop to think about it it's, it's often a um, pretty simple equation as to why they keep offending. Yeah, and so this the Criminal Justice Coordinating uh, Council, which Pat Malone did an excellent job putting together um, a few years ago, um, is that vehicle. You know, you can sit in front of, you know, the DA, the sheriff, the judge, and be like, who's tracking recidivism? Who's tracking it? And, and are we talking to each other? D does anyone here know that answer? Like, I'm so if we guess, don't use data. Yes. So Thanks, Pat. <laughs> So we need to like track that in a comprehensive way, make sure that the, the, the way that the different criminal justice involved groups communicate with each other so that we can say, yes, what we're doing is useful instead of just, you know, spraying and praying with, with community programs. Any other questions? Thanks, Adam. Good work. Thank you. Who's next, Doc? Andrea. Andrea, you're up. All right. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have on my um, report, but then I also have some other things that have come up with the past within the past week that I would like to update you guys on too. So um, in my 4-H highlights, I'm working on Clover College bo project boxes again with Michelle, and I'm really excited about them. A because I want to do all the projects that we're going to do because they are super fun, <laughs> but also because I, I've created this program specifically to allow youth who do not have um, strong internet access at home to participate because this is something I've noticed within this past year of working from home and having to have a decent internet connection to actually participate in some of the programs we're doing. Um, I'm not getting youth to participate because they don't have decent internet access. So I've made these project boxes um, from lessons that I've either compiled by making them or with this next round, we're going to be using um, curriculum that I bought with program dollars. So they're going to get all the pieces that they need besides like, you know, scissors or glue or some stuff that they might have at home. And then they're going to be able to make this project at home without like coming onto a Zoom, like my next um, program that I've talked about. And then I'm going to evaluate it later. I, I got some really good feedback from the last program. We had about 14 youth participate total. And that was just the programs that we sent out. That wasn't including everyone who participated within the family. So they don't have to log in later. These are kind of like fun at home activities to do with their parents. It's to simulate Clover College, which we typically hold during the fall. But I'm hoping that this can be maybe something that I can supplement in during the winter months when we kind of are, we don't have a lot going on, but people still want to do something. So the, pro, the projects that we picked for this month, we're doing like a fish tackle ID. Um, we're making a, a wallet out of fabric scraps. Um, we're gonna make corn plastic because STEM rocks. I love STEM just about as much as Adam likes STEM. We're going to do, oh, what was the other one? There's one I always forget. Either way, <laughs> we're gonna be doing all of those and they will, they're gonna be $5 a project because I'm not trying to cover all the costs for the projects, but I wanna make sure that they're available and accessible for youth and families to participate. I don't, I, I don't intend to make money on these. I wanna get, get these out to kids so that they can be participating with them. 
Um, the one new thing that I'm going to try this time around that I didn't do the last time is I'm going to use 4-H online to do the registrations because A, they have all my demographic data from all my 4-Hers in there. So I don't have to ask those awkward questions of, are you Latinx? Are you, where do you live? All of that is already available to me. So I don't have to ask those questions because that makes the evaluation long. And most of the time people don't fill that out. Second, it's a, hopefully it's going to be an easier platform to use. We're going to find out. <laughs> It's taken me a couple days to make the registration so far, and I think I have it done, but I'm waiting for Mike Ferry at the state to let me know. Um, the next thing that I have on my program is, or on my report, is my Arts and Crafts mini camp. Oh, this was awesome. So I included some pictures from the event. We This one was via Zoom. We did have... I think we had three youth from Trempolo County who participated, and then I think because we had five total. And then we had a couple from Jackson County. So like I said, limited participation via the internet. So I'm trying to do both so I can cover both areas. So this one was pretty great. We worked on paper snowflakes with the kids. We did handmade stuffies. So actually one of the pictures um, is Lily. She is a youth from Eau Claire County and she taught the kids how to make stuffies and it was the cutest thing because she was teaching them how to hand sew virtually and virtual lessons are hard enough but she was able to teach them how to sew virtually which is if anyone understands how to sew like it's still pretty hard you need someone there to be like I can't get the needle in the thread what do I do no she was able to do that and she did it with grace oh my gosh that girl is going to be an amazing leader one day <laughs> even though she already is an amazing leader so I shouldn't say it like that <laughs> um, then we also did air dried clay which is the lesson I taught I actually have my beautiful bowl right here <laughs> <laughs> My sister's a, a potter, so I, I wanted to do something that was similar because we could we can't all go to her studio right now. Some people can, but it's not available to everyone because this project we did between areas five, six, and nine. So it was Polk, St. Croix, Chippewa, oh gosh, Eau Claire, Dunn, Pepin, Buffalo County, Trempolo, and Jackson. So those are all the counties that were participating. For the most part, we had people represented well in each county. And then the last project we did, which was actually with um, an art therapist in Eau Claire County, was a wax crayon painting so that they had to draw with the crayon and then they couldn't really see what they were drawing because it was a white crayon and then they painted over it with paint and it was actually pretty fun because kids had to learn that they can't have full control of everything and so watching them make that connection was was pretty great so this this project it's a lot of fun doing these virtual lessons because it reminds me that we we can teach online um a lot of people are hearing right now oh virtual oh it's so awful oh my gosh we hate it our kids hate it they're they're on they're online all the time whether they're on school um virtual lessons or if they're on their phone or if they're playing video games with their friends um this this was a very positive environment for them to be in and they really had a lot of fun um, a lot of them in the chat later on were like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I really didn't think I'd love crafts. I was only here for the pottery and I loved all of this. So we got some very positive responses from them. And I, I'm hoping, we're, we're doing a series of these. So I'm hoping that later on we'll, we'll apply for an award. Because um, we did very, we did apply for an award with the cookie one that we did over um, December. And that one got an regional award. Uh, then lastly, um, volunteer highlights. I'm working with our Jackson County Leaders Board to do um, board meetings before. So all of our board members are going to meet beforehand to hash out kind of what they expect, what their plans are for the meeting, and then also to create the agenda. Uh, this was actually their idea, but it's an idea that I really want to start implementing in both counties. Granted, with volunteers, you have to expect that this is their this is their extra time i don't want to be having them spend 20 to 15 hours a week on something that isn't like work or home because i don't want to burn out volunteers but oh sorry they they did a really great job and so i'm hoping that we can start building better leadership skills in that area because i mean yes 4-h is for youth but we're also building the leadership in our adults that are in the program because 
they are they are part of our communities and a lot of what we teach through extension whether it's mandated reporter training or how to run a meeting like those are things that they are they're using outside of our program so that that has been pretty big and i'm, I'm really excited to watch how they how they develop through that so some of the things that aren't on my report that I'm working on for this next year, um, we're waiting for next week for the summer guidance for how we can hold in-person meetings in the county. Um, I know I've talked to Melissa about this because she's already like, Andrea, what kind of day camps are you doing? Well, we're going to be doing a lot of day camps this summer. <laughs> I know, sorry to call out Melissa, but <laughs> she reminded me that that's what we're, we're planning. So I've got a bunch of day camps that I'm planning on my docket, mainly because I I don't want to touch overnight camps yet because there's a lot of extra steps that I'll, I'll have to take in order to make that happen. Plus, um, in Trempeleau County, we're very lucky to have Petrix Park, and I would like to have something put on their calendar as soon as possible so that we can have hopefully some Cloverbud Day Camps. So that's for kids in kindergarten through third grade. Um, they're the little ones. I want them to be involved in 4-H as soon as possible because they're the ones who are hopefully going to stay once they find something that they like and give them a reason to keep coming back to our program. Um, then also I want to do some form of camp. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. And then also probably, I know I haven't talked to Adam about this, but if he doesn't do it, I will, <laughs> some form of science camp. <laughs> so. I want to do as much outside with the youth as possible because, well, it, hopefully, I'm hoping it's going to be a beautiful summer. With the weather that we've been having right now, not so much, but I think it's going to be a really great summer, and I'm hoping that we can forget, not forget, but learn from what we experienced this last year in 2020 and really have a, a safe, positive summer outdoors with youth doing what 4-H does best, which is doing hands-on learning and in-person social skills. So we're going to be doing stuff. I don't have anything ready yet because I'm waiting for that guidance because I don't want to jump the gun and have something planned or picked when I really shouldn't have done that. But um, you can be expecting something like that from me this summer. So you're probably not going to see me very often because I'm going to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So <laughs> like a normal summer for a 4-H educator. So, yeah, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions on that? I guess not. Thank <laughs> All you. All right, sounds good. Melissa? 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 Well, I just want to second everything Andrea said. As a mother of three young children, I cannot wait until Andrea has some activities to take them to. And I think I speak for a lot of parents in the area. And also, um, Andrea, if you want to come and do some of those craft boxes with, with my clover bud, anytime you want him, I, I'll have him waiting at the end of the driveway for you to pick up. So um, I'll give you just a couple highlights of my programs. Um, you have my report there. Um, but since the last time we met, um, I continue to work with the women in government team. Um, that's an initiative to encourage more women to run for local office because uh, women are really underrepresented um, at all levels of elected office, but um, we're focusing on uh, local offices. So. Um, you know, county boards, town boards, um, city councils, village councils, things like that. Um, not so much uh, state elected office or uh, federal offices, but more just at the local level um, and encouraging women to run for office. And we're also broadening that um, to also encourage uh, more diversity in local offices too. And so we do a series of educational um, seminars, I guess, um, we have a run called a, a series called Run For It. And in that series, um, we just talk about the nuts and bolts of running for office. So like um, I did a couple videos in December about how the caucus process works because some local entities use that um, for getting on the ballot. And then we just had a panel uh, talk about campaigning for local office, especially when um, we're still, you know, living in a world with COVID and what precautions should be taken or what approach should be taken. Um, so I continue to work on that. Um, I do also do a lot of uh, training for election workers. Um, so last year was very busy with that. And now with just two elections this year, um, it's really 
excited um, a lot. So I've just kind of been uh, directing people towards training resources that they might need uh, for the April election. And then I'm hoping to take just a little bit of break from election training for a while. Um, I've been working a lot with community development. Um, I work with some colleagues on several different teams, but what my real interest is downtown development. So working with downtown businesses or even just um, working with improving downtown areas. Um, I have been participating in some COVID specific uh, work groups, like um, getting some information out there for the small businesses on the Paycheck Protection Plan. Um, I've also recently pivoted just a bit and um, been working with some colleagues on increasing childcare uh, access in both of my counties. I also have Clark County, if you remember. Um, and there's just, you know, there's always been a need for child care. And then in the last year, we've really lost um, some child care facilities. So um, what does it look like to um, develop child care, especially um, in the context of workforce development so that people can um, go to work, return to work, um, gain employment because there is adequate child care available. Um, and I'm working with the Small Business Development Center. They have some CARES Act funding to help fund um, some training and other uh, aspects of developing uh, more child care here in the area. And then my other program area, oh, I should go back. Um, I'm also doing a profile on the exodus of independently owned pharmacies in rural communities. Um, you know, when we had shop co close in Arcadia, uh, we lost the pharmacy that we had in our most populous town. And so some of these other independently owned pharmacies are really um, struggling, and that's due to a policy change in Medicaid reimbursements. But um, I'm working with our GAIS specialist in Madison about um, getting some data together to map that and then look at what the implications are for the rural areas. Um, and then um, my other major program area is natural resources or farm management. Um, I do work, I lead the agricultural plastics recycling effort on behalf of Extension and I just did a professional development seminar for colleagues, um, I think right before we met last time um, in giving them information about how to help farmers with recycling plastics. And then I'm leading a couple collection efforts around the state and doing some research on um, recycling practices and how to best implement uh, recycling systems for egg plastics recycling. Um, we are going to do year three of our well water study here in Trempolo County that will wrap up that program. Um, Katie, who was first our intern uh, for several years in our office and then uh, really helped with the, the water program um, is going to be available to help coordinate that again she did an excellent job just with mailing out bottles um, or coordinating the, the pickup of those bottles um, we do also have a water testing program for homeowners in Trempolo County we haven't had a whole lot of people take advantage of it until Michelle tells me yesterday um, suddenly there was this huge influx of people um, interested in uh, water testing kits. Uh, they can get those through Dairyland Lab. And um, I think it might have been because the health department, um, it was water testing week and they maybe had some information that they put out. We do, we've had information out, but it's just been kind of slow. People do tend to test their water in the spring too. So um, this is a great time as any to have water tested. And so we do have that program available right now too. So um, those are some of the highlights um, of my programming, if you have any questions. Thank you. Sandy, you're up. Good morning. Um, I work with April and we're the nutrition educator people for our counties. Um, we just finished up Arcadia schools, uh, almost done teaching K, second and fifth and independent schools. We do a series of six lessons. So those are finishing and we are starting 4K um, at some of the head starts in schools and they are adorable. And, but we have to convert, they, you know, they have a curriculum and then they send us a package, but it really isn't um, interactive with four-year-olds. So April and I have been doing a lot with uh, 
making it interesting for four-year-olds, which is a real challenge to keep them a four-year-old in, you know, um, busy for 20 minutes. So uh, we're, we're having a lot of fun with that. Our food pantries are going well. The county food pantry is still at about 200 households per third Saturday. So that continues at about that same level. Um, it'd been really high when, you know, a year ago and when Ashley had kind of closed down, but now it's leveled off to a steady level. Um, in Arcadia, there's a couple of food pantries and one actually reaches out to some of the folks that Adam works with that are over at the Arcadia Hotel. So there's a movement in town that um, whenever there's a food drive, anything with a snap top, you know, like a spaghetti oils, anything that's easy to open, all gets funneled over to OLPH because that's where they're going to show up, you know, on those off times and say, hey, we have nothing to eat. So they can go and get. Doing well, and then her mouth wasn't moving, and then we lost her. Yeah. Hang on, Sandy. I think we lost you. If you can hear us. Yes, you can. We're trying to see if we can get Derek, if he might know how to fix the problem. Because I can't it's hear not you either. Huh. Oh, there now we, we can hear you. Oh, uh, we get glitches in the internet, even in Arcadia. So, yeah, so we're doing this Hispanic outreach that's, um, we are um, gonna be using the communication tools out of Madison with the simultaneous um, translation for the first time on a Zoom. So that'll be interesting. So that's where we're heading to for the summer. Maybe summer school, depending on all the rules. But that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. April? Um, April is on vacation, so oh. it was oh just... Oh, my goodness. Uh, I know. We're kind of shocked somebody actually took a vacation. Vacation? I don't know. Well, the dean is telling people they need to... We can't keep our vacation forever. We have to use it. So um, if you're ready... We will do some introductions, sure. and I, uh, we're going to get to you, Caitlin, but let's introduce our new committee member. This is Kellen Nelson. Why don't you say hi, Kellen, and tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go around and say names. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Kellen Nelson. I'm from the Pleasantville area. I know several people uh, in this department already, so... Um, farm with my brothers, have a pioneer seed business, uh, married with three kids. My wife's a 4-H leader, and um, yeah. And uh, he actually um, is taking your, your dad's place, so. Yep, yep, finishing up his term, and, and uh, we'll see how it goes if I run again. But. Okay, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know all your committee members. Do you know Sandy? You know Sandy now? I know her now. Okay. And Andrea, Melissa, have you met Melissa? Melissa, I don't think so. I've seen her before, but I uh, didn't know who she was. Okay. And Adam? Uh, yep, worked with Adam. And, well, I'm also on the fair board, so. Well, yep, there uh, you go. Yep. <laughs> and Steve is hiding. He probably has a program. But that leads us. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yep, I know Steve well. Um, our new uh, horticulture educator started on St. Patrick's Day. Um, I can't decide if that was in honor of me or of, of her very Irish name as well. So this is Caitlin O'Connor, and I will let her introduce herself to you guys. All right, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, as Pat said, my name is Caitlin O'Connor. Um, I live across the river over in rural Winona County, and I'm really excited to be a part of the educator team here um, at the University of Wisconsin. Um, so far, I have really just been doing a lot of onboarding, you know, learning the structure of the organization, learning about 
the county board, um, getting all of my tech set up. Apologies for my technical difficulties this morning. Looks like we're still working out um, a few of the details here. Um, and I've also met um, with Pat and Steve and gotten a really great list of community members so I can start building relationships within Tremplo and Jackson counties and start hearing more from the community about what types of programming they would like to see um, as, as my work moves forward. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for now, but it's been really great to put some names with some faces and to hear your, all your voices. And I'm really looking forward to starting to, to dig my teeth in and get some work done. And I can um, verify that uh, Steve is already doing the happy dance because he's already been sharing some very lively questions with her. So do you guys have any questions? Welcome aboard. Obviously, that's all I have to say. And Caitlin Doc is our, uh, he used to own Sunset Gardens uh, down in Galesville. Right. Do they still have oh, you doing lovely. any? I love that place. Great to know. Do, do they still have you doing any work there or have you well, I've, I've migrated? I retired uh, last summer. Right? All right. Good, yes. So, um, yeah, we're, gl we're glad to have her aboard. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, having somebody answer those important questions, work with our master gardeners, and then do broader, um, broader uh, horticulture programming. And there's another name I need to give you before, before I forget. So um, that's, what, that's our introduction. And what's next? Budget. Budget. We still have money. <laughs> okay, that's good. You, what's happening in um, in our budgets is sort of a continuation of, of last year. Um, there's some regular expenses that we're continuing to have, but some of the bigger ones like travel, just they're not going to be um, it, much expenditure until we are able to do more regular face-to-face -face programming. Um, and then, you know, this is as much for Kellen's knowledge as other folks. The two big bills we get every year are for the educator services, and they come twice a year, and the first one is being prepared now, and we should see it in the next couple weeks my guess is you'll see it on the uh, budget um, spreadsheet next time that we meet um, and that will be about for about half of it when I put those together with Catherine Woodlack we sometimes we move things back uh, Caitlin's costs won't show up because she just started but you know the other ones will and it's the last bill of the year that will also reflect any savings from the furloughs that we've all had to take. Do you guys have any questions about that? And I also would like to know, are you finding it helpful to get that regular uh, budget update? That? Yes. Okay. Um, I also know that you want to get the reports in advance so you can actually read them. And we've asked all the educators to have them into Michelle by the third so that we can get them mailed out to you in advance um, and that's uh, you know we just have to get everybody in line and and that won't be a problem any questions if there are none we should probably set our next meeting date 22nd That's a Thursday. Yep. Mm -hmm. The fourth Thursday. Is that what we've been sticking with? Yeah, 422 at 9. Yep. Okay. Well, 
Uh, then I think we will be moving into the uh, WTCO. Um, I'm actually, Derek, frankly astonished I remembered that. <laughs> um, the, the staff will tell you I am not the great rememberer. Um, so, so staff, if you need to get on to other things, I appreciate you being here, and uh, I'll be up in a bit, Caitlin. So, and I'm here all day, Melissa, for my assigned duty. And I'll just stay here, Derek, so I can log us off when we're all done. Okay. Are we ready? All right, so my first item of our portion is uh, to discuss the TV studio staffing levels. Um, in front of you is an agenda that, or a resolution that we just had uh, finished up yesterday um, to bring the uh, program coordinator and production coordinator back up to full time. Um, it, about 10 years ago, the hours were reduced to save money during the recession. Um, and um, during the pandemic, we've been covering quite a bit of county committee meetings and county board meetings, um, and we're starting to see community producers coming back in and um, community events starting to happen that we need to send people out to, and we're quickly realizing that we're not going to have enough staff hours to be able to do everything that we, we need to do. Um, so I'm asking to bring them both up to full time um, and it'll cost this year it'll cost approximately um, $48,289.26 um, one of the reasons being uh, one of the staff people they never budgeted for health insurance for this year anyways so bringing them yeah bring bringing them up to full time uh, we, we have to budget for that even if they don't take it um, but According to my budget, only one part-time staff person has insurance budgeted for when there should have been two. So, um, how did that happen? I'm not sure, but according to my spreadsheet, it's just one. So, um, we're looking for um, approval of this resolution so that we can continue to cover all the meetings and uh, start covering some of the community events as well. So that is an increase of how much? Do you have that for us? Yep, it's um, in the resolution. It's forty-eight thousand two hundred and eighty-nine dollars and twenty-six cents uh, for the twenty twenty-one budget. That's that's an actual total increase of forty-eight thousand. Yep, that's including the salaries, the health insurance, and the increase in retirement, social security, and me Medicare expenses. So that'll show up as a new budget item. Yeah, we're, we're asking for a uh, transfer from the general fund to our budget accounts to pay for that. Hmm. <laughs> so if we get approved here, personnel and finance could actually vote it down? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, the, re the resolution's got to go to the full board as well. That right. it could get voted down there as well. But... Um, um, <clears throat> unfortunate, you know, that's why we like to do our homework when it comes to budgeting. Um, but yeah, I understood, understood. I, I, I was not pointing any fingers. Uh, um, I guess, uh, I will make the motion to, um, approve this and move it forward in the process. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing well, none. I, I'd just make a comment maybe. I, I, I think, <laughs> but well, I shouldn't speak for anybody. I guess I'm going to be on exec finance, so we'll definitely be a lot of discussion there. With all that's happening and some monies that have showed up, through COVID, I think there's, we're going to see that there's a possibility we can <coughs> find it for this year, but I don't know if this is the first year. So we'll have to see where it goes, but I guess we'll I'll go along with it for now and move it on and see what happens. Yeah. 
Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. All right, so next we have um, policy handbook revisions. Um, I don't think Kellen got a copy, but I emailed him out for what was supposed to be last month's meeting. Um, most of the changes are just uh, where it says TCC TV, we changed it to WTCO, and um, where it said TV studio coordinator, we put director and, and that sort of stuff. So most of it's just switching terms and updating for the current terms. And what you're telling me or the committee is that um, there is really no change in content, dates, titles, um, the kind of um, attention that needs to be paid to a policy with regularity. Well, I went through just to make sure it all still was how we were doing stuff. And it, it still matches how we're doing things. It wasn't too long ago that it was updated. Um, we're just making sure that the terms are correct and um, making sure that it all made sense. I, I need to ask a favor, okay. and that is that you include the last date of um, change to the to the policy, so that in the future when we look at it, we know when it was last paid attention to, and uh, will help us as we move forward. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to accept the policy handbook as presented by Derek. Second. Joel? Yep. He's first. I'm just entertaining the motion. Oh, I didn't make oh, it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. You mind going first then? That's fine. Yeah, all right. <laughs> motion by Feltis, second by Nelson. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. All right, next uh, is a request to use PayPal for online donations. Um, the reason it had to come to you guys is they charge a fee for using PayPal. Um, we didn't want to use the same system that the county uses for like tax collections because we didn't want to get a donation from somebody and then charge them a fee for giving us a donation. We wanted to be able to, you know, if you make a $20 donation, we pay the 35 cents out of that $20 donation instead of saying, oh, you want to make a $20 donation, now it's $20.35. Yeah. So we wanted to be able to do it that way. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. All right, and the last item is the underwriter tiers that um, you should have. Uh, they, it, it really just adds some smaller tiers to encourage other small businesses to be able to give money to us in a meaningful way. We get a lot of donations that are $50 and $100 where they don't qualify for any sort of thank you on, on air. And this would give us the option to, you know, give them on air recognition for giving $50 and hoping that it would encourage more businesses to give us, you know, $50, $25 as far as donations. Are um, donations to WTCO tax deductible? Just a curious. I don't know. That I would be, uh, if it's tax deductible, it would be a, an excellent thing 
to put out there for yeah. potential donors. Mm -hmm. I will check with Paul. Um, I, I know that if if it's a form of advertising for the business, like if we put their name out there, they can write that off as an advertising expense. So it's a similar similar thing. So this would give a $25 don donation advertising, even if, because their name would be in a list. So. Well, I, I, yeah, I um, know for for a fact that um, donations to Wisconsin Public Television are tax right. deductible, right. as is uh, public radio. Um, so my assumption, and I'd like you to continue and check on it, is that donation to uh, WTCO would also be deductible. I guess I never thought of that. That's a good point. I was going to say no right away, but you. It's. Uh, I think it's a. Well, for me. Uh, I'd be more apt to to donate if I knew the, uh, and it goes to a good cause. Don't get me wrong, but right. it's tax deductible too. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I'll check with Paul on that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, do you need a motion to implement this uh, tier system? Yes. Also move on that. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Oh, and we already set the next meeting date. So at 10.05, uh, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>